Welcome viewers. If you want to see me do this deathless challenge in the base game, then I'd check out my videos on the good and evil campaigns where I do this challenge, but for this one I'm using the expansion pack, the Rise of the Witch King, where I go through the Angmar campaign. For those of you who haven't seen these videos, I have four rules that I abide by. Rule number one is I have to rescue any allies on the map, even if it's optional, because I want to make sure that my army is as large as possible and I save everyone. Rule number two is the most important, and it's that I cannot lose any units during these missions. If I do, then I have to restart in order to complete the challenge. Rule number three is that my units are only considered killed when every single one of them in a battalion dies. This is because in this game, you select a whole battalion with one click for army units, and as long as you have one alive and that unit gets to level two, then all the other units can revive. This is because of the banner carrier mechanic where basically it serves as a medic to revive your other units. And so in my head cannon, they never die and you can revive them as long as the banner carrier is still alive. Rule number four is that buildings do not count as units. I can lose as many buildings as I want and I will use fortresses and other walls and buildings to my advantage in this campaign, but as long as the units survive, then I can get through the mission. So for mission one, we start with our good old witch king, who's a king, has a lieutenant, but has no army. So I'm going to try to recruit the trolls to my side. I find Rogash, who's a troll that fights like a human, or an elf, or an orc whatever but <laughs> but now that we've got our hero crew together the witch king can be mounted i think for most of the time i'm going to keep him dismounted so i can have my hero troop just because they can take more hits and i can have all my heroes together but i may switch him over to his horse riding whenever i have a unit of cavalry all together or in this case with angmar the snow trolls act as cavalry units kind of because they're pretty fast and they have trampling capabilities so once I start getting the trolls, I have to fight off the Black Numenorians, who will join my army after this mission, but for now they're my enemies. So I have three different, not really fortresses, more like tiny mini outposts of Black Numenorians to take from, and with each one I get a separate building. I didn't know which one was which, but thankfully I got my mills first, because I do want some resources up and I can use the builder I get to start building more alongside the map, and these will also serve as a distraction for the invading Black Numenorean army at the end of this mission. I wanted to get the Black Iron Forge next so that I could upgrade my trolls with plenty of time, but the next one I get is the Troll and Wolf Den. This is fine because I can get two more troops of snow trolls to join my little troll cavalry, and then I can finally take the final Black Iron Forge, which gives me a little bit of time to upgrade my troops before the Black Numenorians start attacking. They come from the southeast, and I send my heroes down first to make sure that my units don't get destroyed, but then I send down my snow trolls to plow through them whenever necessary, and I end up winning pretty quickly. I took two attempts because in the beginning, I lost um, one troop of snow trolls because I didn't realize that dark rangers were attacking them while I was distracted, which let them die, but then I quickly beat the second attempt very easily. Really quick before I start mission 2, I wanted to give a shout out to Yofk, who I've been talking with and has done challenges like this but if, before I even realized it, and is a small channel like me, and also to Giant Grant Games who gave me this idea when I found his videos. But also, if you appreciate what I make for fun, feel free to like my videos, subscribe, and you can even go to my Patreon, where I have tiers where you can donate $1 or $2 just to show your appreciation. Now that we've recruited the trolls and the Black Numenorians to our side, we have to get the last and definitely least part of our army. So we are going to Rudar to get the Thrallmasters. But real quick, before I get to that, I'll get you up to speed on the mission. So we are coming to Rudar with our main force, and we have to rescue Hualdar, the clan leader. Now we can technically rescue some other groups first before Hualdar, but according to the mission, when you rescue Hualdar, more troops appear. And so according to the rules, I have to try to get as many of my troops as possible. So Hualdar it is. I send in my troops to rescue him without much trouble, and I get our weakest hero just objectively um and similarly his people are the weakest units so as i mentioned before these are thrall masters 
and they are a very cheap unit that comes from level one barracks and they can summon four different kinds of troops gundaban orcs for soldiers spearmen axe throwers for ranged attacks and wolf riders for cavalry units but all of these units are much weaker versions of the enemy units so the point is to swarm your opponent but in this kind of challenge that's bad which means they're going to die a lot but anyway i go to all the camps on the map and use our heroes to free our hillmen from the enemy hillmen this is a pretty simple process, and we even get some resources from the poor man's scavenge ability that Hwaldar gives us, but this gets us to the main part of the mission. On the west side of the map are two fortresses for Arnor that are heavily defended with defensive structures and units, and constantly build more units in order to harass us. True to my prediction, the wolf riders that I had built to make a cavalry unit die to the Dunedain multiple times, and my builders, when left unaware, are also picked off by the Dunedain. This caused me to do a dumb and degenerate strategy. Basically, before I got access to the builders and the buildings, I could still get an outpost. So with my heroes, I got the outpost getting a tiny bit of resource production, about 50 every, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. And then I just waited before taking out the last camp and went and fixed myself lunch. Uh, <laughs> so by the time I got back, I had about 20,000 or so resources. <laughs> and then when I took out the last camp and the enemy attacked, I was able to finish my fortress, fully upgrade it, and start building walls. This protected my builders and my weaker units, and also let me slowly make headway with my heroes before building more fortresses. This didn't stop Hwaldar and a troop of Rudar spearmen to die anyway as it progressed, but eventually I built up the multiple fortresses, and then I used the maximum upgrade, the Witch King's Sanctum, to send a giant volley of ice at the enemy fortresses over and over. This caused major damage, similar to a troll stone thrower, which destroyed many of the enemy's buildings, and then I was able to send in my heroes to finish them off, completing the level in seven attempts. For mission three, the Witch King takes his completed army and starts an assault on the fortress of Amun Sul. So mechanically, this mission works the same way as the latter half of the second mission, but with a cool twist. So, the fortress of Amansul has Malorn trees, and these have assigned abilities to them, which include a powerful sunray attack, a part the clouds ability that freezes my soldiers, a tree that summons Dunedain, a tree that summons a forest buff, and a rebuild tree. As you might expect, my first priority is to get rid of the sun tree, because the moment that hits any of my troops, probably including my heroes, they'll die. Thankfully, I can give in a 5 minute time limit before I can destroy it, and I can easily send my hero squad to punch a hole through the walls and take out the tree. Next, I need to take out the rebuild tree. I'd like to take out the Dunedain tree, but it is sequestered like between a lot of defensive towers and walls and right next to the main Amensul fortress, so it's kind of annoying to get to. Because of this, the Dunedain do take out my builders a lot which causes me to eventually build a lot of battle towers that I can hide my bu builders in. It would be really nice if I could have goblin tunnels or dwarf mines or something like that, but this is the best that Angmar's got. Once I've survived long enough for my resources to build up pretty well, I start building walls and upgrading my fortress so that the enemy cavalry units and some in Dunedain that they send my way aren't as big of a problem. I build some troll stone throwers, but honestly having four heroes, especially as strong of heroes as Rogash and the Witch King, is almost like a cheat code in and of itself. The enemies have huge armies, but as long as I'm careful, none of the heroes come close to dying. I find out that the Witch King's Sanctum ability can reach basically anywhere on the map that I want to, and it can take out any of the Malorn trees in one hit. This lets me finally get rid of that pesky Dunedain tree, as well as the forest tree. 
I could then rush the fortress with my troops because I don't have to destroy any of the other buildings, but I take down the other enemy buildings and troops anyway to level up my heroes because I might as well get them as high as possible. The Witch King and Morgamir to level 10, Rogash to level 8, and Hualdar to level 6, and to make it a little bit safer going towards the fortress. I can destroy the fortress normally with stone throwers or with my heroes, but I decide to end it with style and I let Morgamir use his level 10 power ruin to take out that last bit of health, winning me the battle on attempt 4. Mission 4 has a weird start to it where there's this almost cinematic that I technically control. So I have a unit of wolves and some thrallmasters who I use to summon two troops of Gundaban orcs. This is because the enemy has a troop of tower guards who are weak to swordsmen, and the hero that's holding the palantir. Now these troops have a scripted death, but I still have to make sure within the bounds of this challenge that my troops survive until that cutscene starts, where they're then killed by Arthedain, I believe, smashing the palantir. And that's where we get to the title of this one, The Dark Lord's Eye, because we need to gather the palantir shards and put them back together to complete the mission for the Witch King. Now, unbeknownst to you guys, unless you've played this campaign before, I loaded a Chekhov's gun earlier by talking about my heroes, because in this mission, and most of the missions that are really hard, I only get one hero. So I only have Morgamir, along with two Dark Rangers and two Hill Trolls. Immediately, the enemy starts rushing the near nearest Palantir Shard, and so I have to send Morgamir as quickly as possible to go get it, and then immediately return to my fortress. The units I'm given are strong, but unfortunately I overestimated them right from the beginning, and my Dark Rangers get run down by cavalry units. I want to use my troops effectively, I don't want to underestimate them, but at the same time, the amount of enemy units greatly outnumbers mine, and the command limit is capped at a pretty restrictive 600 in this level. Now I just have to get 4 shards to reach a stalemate position, because as long as the enemy can't get 4 shards, they can't automatically win, but I would have to retrieve any shards that Arnor got from their outpost, and I don't really want to storm their outpost because I feel like it would be very hard without losing units. So my strategy is to get all the shards before the enemy, which isn't necessarily difficult, but I'm going to have to summon wolf riders who can die very easily. Basically, every unit wins one-on-one -on -one with the Wolf Riders if I'm not directly micromanaging them, except maybe normal archers. And the enemy troops are rarely alone in this mission. I train some Black Numenorians to counteract the enemy tower guards, and then I start upgrading my units with the appropriate buildings while sending my Wolf Riders simultaneously to gather shards. I have to be very careful because if tower guards are guarding the shards instead of Dunedain or another troop, then the wolves might kill themselves by running right into the pikes. I then try to lead the resulting skirmish to my fortress where my main troops are, but even then I have to be very careful, because if my dark rangers get surrounded in particular, then they're likely to go down. Eventually, my wolf riders are able to collect the shards until I'm down to the last one, where I then circle around to scope out where the enemies are and draw them in so that I could take them out of my fortress, and eventually I'm able to take this last shard from the enemy and win the mission. This one was much harder than the last three and took me 21 attempts. For mission 5, Waldar and the Hillmen are sent to the Barrow Downs, the sacred graves of Arnor, so that we can draw Arnor's forces to attack us. There are many things working against us this mission. So first of all, we just have a bunch of Thrallmasters, and earlier I kind of lied because it wasn't pertinent at the moment, but there actually are another type of attacking unit in Angmar, the Sorcerers. Sorcerers are weird. You have to upgrade their building to automatically get their next kind of spell, but these sorcerers I'm given already have access to every kind of spell. The first ability, Soul Freeze, can freeze enemies in place, and I considered using this a bit, but it also makes the enemies invincible, and so I decide against it. The second ability sounds great for this mission on paper, because it absorbs enemy health to heal my units in the area, but the enemies that die are turned into whites, which in a normal mission is a cool after effect, but with this mission I don't want it, because it'll summon whites in the midst of enemies they will probably get killed, but even if it doesn't, then there's a time limit and it'll automatically die. 
So the only one I'm left with is the Rain of Souls ability, which acts as a singular point barrage power that can rain down death on the enemy units, but unfortunately my units can also be caught up in this crossfire, so I have to be very careful with the positioning. Also to use the power, my sorcerers have to sacrifice some of their followers, meaning that using their powers would be impossible if I included every single little unit but even in my mission it makes it harder because then there's less units in the battalion and especially en enemy cavalry units can easily overrun the sorcerers i may be beating a dead horse at this point but thrallmaster units are not very strong i use only hillmen with some axe throwers and some spearmen to begin with because they all get a leadership bonus from hualdar and i spend the first bit of the mission killing all of the dunedain in the area this is a bonus objective that I don't technically have to kill, but I should kill any possible units that I can before the main mission starts. And this includes a little bug that I found, where if you go to the top northwest of the map, and I mean the absolute highest you can go near the edge, then enemy units will start spawning right off the map. So I send Hualdar to kind of get the enemy units to come out and attack, but unfortunately, Hualdar is the weakest hero, as I mentioned before. If this, Even if I had Morgamir, I would have an auto buff, and Morgamir has a little bit more health and damage than Hualdar as well. But if I had the Witch King or Rogash, this would be awesome. But instead, I'm stuck with Hualdar. So basically, I have to go around randomly to get these units to spawn, and then kill them one by one with my Hillman units and Hualdar together, as long as I don't let the battalions die. I lose several attempts here, but seeing all the troops that I'm killing, some cavalry units, a lot of archers and soldiers, I think it would be way better to get them out of the way before the waves start coming. And speaking of the waves, let's get to the meat of the mission. So I have to hold a hill in the Barrow Downs on top of the Graves of the Kings to make the enemy attack us, and I have to keep this hill for the entire mission. If I leave the hill and an enemy unit steps on it, that's an automatic defeat. If this doesn't sound like it sucks, I assure you, it sucks. We're given no builders, so I can't build any fortresses or other defensive structures, and I also can't build any other units, so I'm stuck with what I've got, which is mostly Thrallmasters and Squishy Sorcerers. I start by playing defensively with the aforementioned Axemen and Spearmen, while using the Sorcerers to rain Corpse Rain down on the enemies when they get too close, but this becomes impossible. The enemies keep on sending groups of troops my way, and I get overwhelmed. This means I have to switch to a more offensive strategy, which means I have to go back to Wolf Riders. I try splitting them up at one point because I get attacked from multiple sides, but this is impossible because the moment that I attack with one group of wolf riders and then leave to check on the other wolf riders, they're probably already dead because the moments the wolf riders stop moving, the enemy troops can overwhelm them, so I have to continuously move them to trample all the enemies in the way as long as they aren't pikemen. And thankfully at the beginning, there are no tower guard to be seen. Over the course of the level, I hobble through more and more enemy troops, eventually saving my troops through the process process, and this lets me get little groups of reinforcements that I can ask to join me. Unfortunately, this is kind of a trap, because as I mentioned before, the moment that I click away from my wolf riders, they're about to die, <laughs> unless they're in a place that's safe from enemy troops. And in that case, that usually means the enemy troops are heading to the hill and my sorcerers are about to die. So I try to separate the new Thrallmasters I'm given that I turn into wolf riders and snow trolls that I'm given as much as possible so I can add to my giant trampling force. But I have to make sure that none of them die in the meantime, which sometimes is hard to see in the midst of battle, but I do my best. Any sorcerers I get could be useful theoretically like they have been on the hill, but I just send them to the far southeast corner of the map so that they won't be attacked because I can't really help them if they're on the road and a random stray Dunedain or troop gets to them. Eventually I get a nice force with Morgamir included and I send them to the middle of the map in the south which is pretty helpful because I mentioned, as I mentioned before Morgamir is a much better hero than Hualdar. There is a point where Rogash and the Witch King join with a bunch of other troops but honestly I can't really use them because by that time the king and his massive final force has already joined. I tried to look at the objectives to see if I could get away with just killing the king, but no, I have to kill the king in every last troop before I get the victory signal. 
To pull this off, I'm going to have to use my sorcerers. It's risky, but I send them near the front lines so that I can spam the enemy base with my corpse rain powers. To do this, I need a hardy group, so I sent my hill trolls and black Numenorians in front with some dark rangers to support them, and I check in on them to make sure they don't die before the corpse rain goes off. This is a good place to segue into the first time I talk about Angmar powers. Now, if you watch my good and evil campaign videos, which you totally should if you haven't, then you probably have heard me talk about powers throughout them, but for Angmar it's a bit different, because most of the good Angmar powers that would help me be aggressive are for summoning units. Gundaban orcs, mountain giants, whites, um, the giant wolf of the end, but I can't use those very much. I even tested them out on a separate file, and I found out that whites last about a minute and 30 seconds before they disappear, mountain giants last a minute and 20 seconds, and Gundaban orcs last two minutes. So if I could figure out a way for them to not disappear in the final battle, then I could use them, but I end up not, because the one time that I use whites, they get killed in the midst of the enemy. So this leaves me with one other power. Well, potentially I could have used the avalanche power, which is one of my 25 point powers that doesn't summon a unit. But after I'd summoned up the amount of points in this level, it didn't let me buy it. It's locked out for this mission, which sucks. It would have been a huge help. So I have to do the next best thing, which is a 15 power called Blight. Now, Blight is similar to the Well of Souls healing ability that I mentioned with the Sorcerers, in that it does damage to the enemy over time, but it will turn them into whites. So what I have to do is get the enemy to a position where the Blight can knock them out, summoning a ton of whites, enough so that none of the whites die and it can take out the enemies quickly at the end of the level before I have to worry about the whites disappearing. So after a couple of tries of this unsuccessfully, I finally get my troops together where they're not taking too much damage in the front. I use my corpse rain to whittle down most of the forces and then I use my blight to wipe out most of them at once, summoning a huge horde of whites that can then help wipe out the rest of the enemy units with the help of my dark rangers and remaining units. This helps me defeat the Arnor forces in mission 5 after a hefty 38 attempts. I honestly thought I was going to beat my old record, but the good campaign Erebor still stands as the highest amount of attempts at 41. We're now at mission 6 and Glorfindel, along with a giant host of elves, is trying to drive us from this world. We get holed up in Karn Doom and are given a little bit of time to prepare for a massive elven invasion. But it's not as bad as it seems. As I mentioned before, having the Witch King kind of feels like a cheat code. He's got the amount of health that a fortress would have, an auto debuff, an area of effect attack, and I keep him mounted so that he can outrun most troops and keep a distance away from cavalry units that try to run him down. Alongside this, I use my time to build up my resources and also to build up a Temple of Twilight for sorcerers, because I know that with my rings of walls that I can use them to their fullest capabilities. If I keep the sorcerers behind Behind a gate, any enemies that start to attack nearby around the gate will immediately be hit by my corpse rain. And when I see that my gate's health is getting low, I'll retreat my sorcerers through the postern gate into the next ring and continue the process there. I mostly send out the Witch King for trebuchet cleanup duty, because those are what really take away my wall defenses, and then my wall defenses can take out most of the enemy troops, with my sorcerers and the Witch King helping at times. The enemy AI is set to target buildings more than troops in this level, unless they're archers, which is very helpful to me, because this means that my sorcerers can escape from some quick pickles, and the Witch King can usually get out before he's about to die. I lose a couple of attempts letting the Witch King die when the amount of elven forces finally drives me up to my main fortress and get destroyed, so this causes me to build up a ton of arrow towers within my second layer of walls, because then the enemies will swarm there before they start attacking the main fortress. I can then use my aforementioned sorcerers and troll stone throwers from within my inner walls to take down Elrond and Glorfindel and the remaining elves, and I could use my small amount of troops that I've upgraded throughout this mission to take out the remaining forces. Despite being far in the campaign, this level was pretty easy and only took me three attempts, and it was really fun. Now to get the upper hand back from Arnor, the Witch King sends us to our favorite place, the Barrow Downs, and the Plague Bearer mission. We're supposed to send sorcerers to the top of the graves in the Barrow Downs and use their spells to spread a plague among Arnor, which is just horrifying if you think about it for a second. This obviously means that my troops are going to have to defend the sorcerers from the incoming enemies. 
So the hills under enemy control have a single scout that can run away and alert more troops to be summoned. So I send the dark rangers who don't alert these scouts, but can kill them from far away as long as I'm not attacked by the other troops in the meantime. I do get builders in this mission, and so I build up some units to use, including wolves yet again, to help me with some cavalry support. But for this mission, I'm mostly going to use Morgamir, Dark Numenorians, and Dark Rangers, because they're just way better troops overall. This mission is pretty simple. The biggest thing I have to look out for is occasionally some enemies, mostly Dunedain, will be sent from the edges of the map to try to kill my sorcerers, and I just have to make sure to place my enemy troops throughout the map so that they can get there quickly, while also having my sorcerers move out of harm's way. King Cardolan, the hero, is randomly summoned at a couple of points during this mission, and I have to hunt him down with my troops while sending the sorcerers away, because he will hard lock onto the sorcerers and start killing them, unless I have him completely surrounded with troops, and I can eventually wear him down and kill him. I finally get the avalanche ability that I had been wanting in mission 5, and I use it to wipe out a bunch of the enemy troops, and then I use my remaining troops to strategically harass them on the west side of the map so that I can take out the main enemy forces. Eventually, I cover all of the hills with my sorcerers, leaving me enough time to gather up all of the corrupted souls that I need, and I spread the plague. At the end of the mission, we corrupt Cardolan with a Morgul blade wielded by Morgamir, and he becomes Karsh, the white that serves our forces. With the addition of Karsh, I ended the seventh mission in nine attempts. We're finally to the final mission, and we have all of our heroes and our main forces to take down the main Arnorian fortress of Fornost. If you remember the evil campaign, we also attacked Fornost in mission four, where it was then filled with dwarves, but this time it's filled with the best that the men have to offer. I try to cheese the mission in the very beginning by using my avalanche power on the enemy fortress and seeing if I can wait at the bottom of the map without the enemies aggroing for me to use the ability again, but the enemies aggroed and attacked me. So for a resulting attempts, I have to use my avalanche at the very beginning to take out most of the enemy troops that are in the field along with a couple of arrow towers they have set aside for me. This lets me start to build up a base. And aside from the enemies that are sent from the fortress to harass me, I can mostly take care of things and start building up my own resources. The enemy walls are very annoying because their set up trebuchets can launch a long way to any buildings I try to build, so I have to make sure to keep to the far south while I'm building. Being a final level power, my avalanche takes a long time to recharge, but every time it does, I hit the enemy fortress, taking out a good chunk, meaning that all I have to do is survive from the enemy attacks on my fortress, and I can just wipe them out without having to send my army up. I mostly use my heroes to fend off the enemy, but they send units annoyingly from both sides, and so I have to use some troops to defend the sides, hoping that they don't die. Eventually, I build up some troll stone throwers, and with the help of my heroes, I take down the enemy trebuchets so that I can have more room to build. This summons some enemy reinforcements, hobbits from the west and elves from the east, but these are very easy to deal with with just my heroes. Eventually, I'm able to build walls of my own, and even though the enemy sends trebuchets that can start taking down the walls, I just continuously build behind them and use the witch king to fend them off to bide my time. Eventually, I use more avalanche powers to take down the enemy fortress, and I was going to use it one more time before summoning my giant wolf to finish it off at the end, but the avalanche did more damage than I was expecting and just won me the battle. I had a little bit of trouble keeping my builders alive, so it took me 9 attempts, but compared to mission 5, it was a little bit anticlimactic at the end. But I've conquered all of Arnor under the rule of the Iron Crown. So the video is over, right? Because that was the whole Angmar campaign. And technically, yes, but there is one epilogue mission. I mean, I could milk it and make this epilogue mission a separate extra video because it's technically a good campaign, but since it's only one mission, I might as well complete it now. I start out as the good guys, an alliance of men and elves to take down the Scourge of the Witch King. I'm given Elrond, Glorfindel, and the human hero Erner, along with a host of elite troops and some builders to work with. At first I try attacking with basically my whole army since the troops are really good, but I find out that they're still army units, so they get taken down. I fight the Angmar forces hero by hero, starting with Morgamir, 
and I mostly use my own heroes and the elite troops of the Knights of Dol Eroth and the Noldor warriors, but as I go along, even those troops are a little bit more squishy than my heroes, and so I lean heavily on my heroes with some archer support from the Noldor. After I defeat Karsh, I start building up a fortress with some walls, because Rogash is a tough cookie and the trolls can deal a lot of damage very quickly. So I use my heroes to harass them, especially with Elrond's tornado, but I can do a lot more damage than I think, because I have A, the heal ability from the overworld which can heal anyone, B, a Thalos from Elrond which can heal my heroes, C, a Thalos from Erner which can heal my heroes, D, Elrond has another healing ability called Restoration that can heal any unit, and a Starlight ability from Glorfindel that can heal my heroes. So I have a ton of regeneration, as long as I recharge them up enough. Eventually, I get to the final walls of the Witch King and his final forces, made up of a fully upgraded fortress, many defensive structures, and a massive army of big bad Dark Rangers, Black Numenorians, and sorcerers. I use a tornado to keep the armies at bay while I try to take down the fortress at first, but the Witch King and his forces kill my heroes before that can happen. So then in the final attempt, attempt 9, I kind of accidentally got a victory. I was sending my heroes up to start harassing the enemy, but I ended up isolating the Witch King from the rest of the troops, and this was my perfect opportunity to assassinate him. This is probably where Elrond got his PvP skills, because he joins my three heroes to take down the Witch King. Unfortunately, unlike Elrond versus Sauron, Elrond is woefully outmatched against the Witch King. So I send him away, but thankfully this lets me cycle with my heroes. Even with all of the healing abilities, the Witch King starts to weigh them down, especially since each of his hits damages all of them at once. But since I sent Elrond away, I can switch him in while I switch my other heroes out and start to wear him till the end. I can then send Glorfindel back out to finish the job, but I decided that some poetic justice was in order, and I send the human hero Erner out to finish the job. In a couple of hits, the human king does it, and I rid the land of Angmar for good. Unfortunately, as Glorfindel says, the doom of the Witch King is not to die by the hands of man. For you statistics lovers out there, I have one final section of the video where I tell you everyone that dies until I get to the top three. At one death each, I have Erner who died once, Gundor Towerguard who died once, Karsh who died once, Hill Trolls who died once, and Whites who died once. At two deaths each, I have Knights of Dol Amroth, Noldor Warriors, Elrond, Snow Trolls, Troll Stone Throwers, Black Numenorians, Morgamir, and the Witch King himself. Next is Hualdar, who died four times, and my sorcerers, who died seven times. And this brings us to the top three. In third place are my builders, who were sniped and run down ten times. Next are the dark rangers, who although deadly, could easily be taken down by cavalry units. And, you guessed it, it was the bane of my existence and the trash troops that I was left with, the Thrallmasters died thirty-one times. Thank you for joining me on this icy adventure, and I hope to see you for the next video, viewers.